This is an auxiliary view problem. You are given front view and the top view. The auxiliary view is projected from the top. First, you need to look for the inclined surface, which is the one you want to show it as a true size surface in the auxiliary view. Based on the inclined edge, we can project it to the front to see the inclined surface. There is one surface in the front view. We're going to label it as a surface A. Surface A is going to be a true size surface we want to show in the auxiliary view. There are two more inclined surfaces in this problem. One is here. When we project it to the top, it shows an inclined surface at this particular location. The other one is down here. If we project it to the top, there's a, the other inclined surface in the top view. So all these uh, surfaces, we should be able to see them in the auxiliary view. But only one inclined surface, which is inclined surface A, which is going to be the true size surface in the auxiliary view. Next, I want to do is to label the each corner of a surface A as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All of the numbers should be reflected on the inclined edge in the top view. So 6 and 7 are overlapped at this corner, 1 and 2 overlapped at this corner, 5 is right here, 3 and 4 overlapped here. Next, we're going to draw the folding plane line. Between the auxiliary view and the top view, the folding plane line is going to be a line parallel to the inclined edge. We'll make it a lighter. And between the top and the front view, this folding plane line is going to be a horizontal line. Because we are going to measure how far each number from this horizontal line. So this horizontal line, we should place it to be as close as the front view as possible. So the folding plane line should be placed here. Next, I'm going to transfer the distance. Starting from the number 1, we can see number 1 is on the folding plane line. And then go to the auxiliary view. From the top view, we should be able to draw the construction line from the 1 and the 2. Construction line, there's a much lighter dot line. So 1 and the 2 must be on this uh, construction line. And because we know 1 is also on the folding plane line, so the intersection marked the location of number 1. Number 2 is one unit from 1. So following the construction line, we should be able to mark the position for the number 2. 3 and 4, we're going to draw the construction line. Because 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 blocks from the folding plane line. So starting from the folding plane line in the auxiliary view, check 1, 2, 3, 4. We can mark the position for the number 3. 4 is the 3 blocks from number 3. Follow the construction line 1, 2, 3 to mark the position for the number 4. Number 5, draw the construction line. Five is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks from the fo folding plane line. So follow the construction line. Check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That marked the position of number five. Six and seven. Start to draw the folding construction line. Number 7 is on the folding plane line. So for construction line and for folding plane line, that intersection marked the position of number 7. 
Six is three blocks from seven. One, two, three. Then mark the position of number six. Now it is time to connect the numbers in order. One to two. Two to three. Three to four. Four to five. Five to six. Six to seven. Seven back to one. This is a true size inclined surface in the auxiliary view. Next, we're going to analyze the rest of the corner to see the rest of the surfaces in the auxiliary view. Starting from the corner right here, as we can see, two vertical lines in the top and the front indicate a normal surface. Because we have a three, two, number three and a number four right in front, so we must have a two corners on the back. And the two, num two points should be connecting to the number three and four to form the surface. So in the front view, we can see one number is overlapped with number three, the other one overlapped with number four. Starting from this corner, we can draw the construction line. And then based on three and a four, we should be able to mark the two points in the auxiliary view. The two points should be connected to the three and a four to form a normal surface in the auxiliary view. Next, we're going to take a look at the corner right here. Because we only have a number five right in front, so we must have one point on the back. And this point in the front view is overlapping with number five. So starting from this corner to draw the construction line, follow the construction line and the position of number five in the front view. We should be able to mark the point in the auxiliary view. And this point must be connecting to some other point to form the surface. We're going to leave it right there and uh, come back later. Let's continue to take a look at this corner. Because we have one or two right in front, so we must have a two points on the back. These two points connecting to one and two to form the surface. Starting from this corner to draw the construction line. With the number one and the number two in the front view, we'll be able to locate the two points in the auxiliary view. And these two points need to connect it to one and two to form the surface. And then let's continue to take a look at the last corner right here. The last corner, because we can see the two vertical lines in the front and the top indicate a normal surface. So we should tell us there must be two points on the back. They are connecting to two and a six and a seven right in front. So starting from this corner, draw the construction line. Follow the construction line and the position of number six and seven, we should be able to mark these two points in the auxiliary view. These two points are connecting to six and seven to form the normal surface. And this surface is actually underneath the surfaces right on the top. So we need to show it as a hidden line. Apparently, there are some other surfaces are missing. 
So what is missing? We're going to take a look at the inclined surfaces. From the inclined edge in the front view, 2 and 3, we can easily see this is a foreshortened inclined surface in the top view. So which tells us number 2 and 3 are continuing to connect it to the points behind. And these are two points in the auxiliary view. They are marked one right here, the other one right here. So two, three are continuing connecting to the po two points behind them, which means these two points should be connected. So this is the second inclined surface in the auxiliary view. Let's take a look at the third uh, inclined surface. In the front view, the inclined edge, which are marked by 0.5 and 0.6. In the top view, which is marked by a surface right here, this surface should be reflected in the auxiliary view as well. So the points behind the number 5 and the number 6, we need to find them and to have them connected to 5 and 6. The point behind number 5 is the point we marked here. The point behind number 6, which is right here. So there is a third inclined surface in the auxiliary view, which is not visible. So we need to use a hidden line to represent it. So finally, we can see all of the surfaces are reflected in this auxiliary view.